For centuries, the Russian Empire adopted a hostile and exclusionary policy towards the Jews. At one point, it even prohibited Jewish immigration unless they converted to Orthodox Christianity, the official religious doctrine of the Russian Empire. Many of Russia's Tsars, including Tsar Peter I, expressed their opposition to the presence of Jews in the empire. Tsar Peter I is famously quoted as saying, I prefer to see in our midst nations professing Mohammedanism and paganism rather than Jews. Starting in the mid-19th century, Jews in the Russian Empire endured systematic violence, racial discrimination, property attacks, leading to a significant migration to eastern China. The majority of these Jewish immigrants eventually settled in the city of Harbin in northeastern China. By the early 1930s, the Jewish population in Harbin had reached approximately 20,000 people, comprising 5% of the city's total population. Leveraging their experiences as citizens of the Russian Empire, the Jewish population contributed to the advancement of Harbin in various fields, including economics, law, medicine, arts, and education. They transformed the city from a poor rural fishing community into a bustling commercial, cultural, and industrial center, competing with other prominent Chinese cities of the time, such as Beijing, Tianjin, Shanghai, and Hangzhou. However, with the invasion of Manchuria by the Empire of Japan in 1931, Harbin fell under Japanese control. This prompted approximately 70% of the Jewish population to flee due to fears of military actions. Consequently, the city of Harbin experienced a decline once again, accompanied by deteriorating economic conditions. Let us mention that the 1930s marked a severe global economic crisis known as the Great Depression. Despite being the strongest and most developed country in East Asia at that time, the Japanese Empire, like the rest of the world, suffered from the devastating effects of this crisis. Compounding the issue was Japan's acute shortage of natural resources necessary for industrial production, and even food and water resources, all of which were limited. Consequently, Japan adopted an aggressive and expansionist policy towards its Asian neighbors to forcibly acquire mineral and other resources that were in short supply. The goal was to utilize these resources and wealth to advance the empire of Japan and support its military endeavors. As previously mentioned, when Japan occupied Manchuria and the Jewish population fled from the region, the Japanese observed a sharp decline and prevailing chaos in Manchuria. This contradicted their initial objective of occupying the region to benefit from its robust economy and advanced infrastructure established by the Jewish community in the city of Harbin. As a result, some Japanese politicians, businessmen, and military personnel devised an unconventional plan to attract as many Jews as possible and encourage their immigration to eastern China, particularly in Manchuria and the city of Shanghai. They even considered welcoming their entry into the Japanese mainland. The aim was to exploit the Jews' expertise in economics and business to bolster the economy of the Empire of Japan and its territories. The proponents of this plan assumed that if Japan established a homeland for the Jews in East Asia and protected it, influential Jewish international organizations and wealthy families like the Rothschilds would donate significant sums to support this emerging Jewish state. Ultimately, this would benefit the Japanese economy and contribute to its salvation. The Japanese were also influenced by Nazi German propaganda, which portrayed Jews as wielding great influence within Western societies in Europe and the United States, including their decision-making processes. It is worth noting that the Empire of Japan had close relations with the Jewish community for many years, even before World War II, and witnessed significant cooperation. One prominent example of this cooperation was when the American Jewish businessman and banker, Jacob Henry Schiff, supported the Empire of Japan with a substantial sum of 200 million U.S. dollars during the Russo-Japanese War between 1904 and 1905. This amount was considered significant at the time and played a crucial role in Japan's decisive victory over the Russian Empire in that war. American billionaire Henry Schiff supported the Japanese during the war in response to ongoing Russian escalating violence against Jews under the rule of Russian Tsar Nicholas II. This realization by the Japanese highlighted the extent of cooperation and unity among the Jewish communities, despite their geographical dispersion across different countries. It piqued the interest of Japanese officials who sought to study Jewish communities and learn about their history, faith, and culture. For instance, Japanese Army Colonel Norohiro Yazu translated the book The Protocols of the Elders of Zion into Japanese. 
His translation garnered interest and admiration from the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which sent him to Palestine in 1926 to study the local Jewish community and gather information. Nora Hiro developed a deep interest in the Jewish communities in Palestine, particularly the kibbutzim, and was impressed by their ability to cooperate, develop rapidly, and rely on self-efforts to provide health, education, and services to their residents. By the 1930s, Nora Hiro Yazu and many of his colleagues held significant influence in decision-making circles within the Japanese Empire. They decided to utilize their knowledge of Jewish community settlement and rebuilding capabilities, proposing a plan to exploit the persecution faced by Jews in Central and Eastern Europe. The aim was to encourage European Jews to emigrate to Manchuria and the territories occupied by Japan and China in order to develop these areas and exploit Jewish wealth to revive the Japanese economy while garnering the sympathy of Jews worldwide. At that time, the Japanese believed they held actual control over the political decisions of major powers such as the United States and Western Europe, as mentioned previously. One prominent Japanese figure who supported Norohiro's plan to encourage Jewish immigration to Japan and its colonies in East Asia was Yashisuke Kawa, the founder of the renowned automotive company Nissan. The Japanese plan to establish a national homeland for Jews in their colonies was known as the Fugu Plan, named after the Japanese puffer fish, which requires careful handling during preparation to avoid severe poisoning. In 1938, a high-level meeting known as the Five Ministers Conference took place in Tokyo to discuss the Fugu Plan. The conference witnessed a debate between Japanese ministers who either supported or opposed cooperation with the Jews. Opponents, influenced by the narrative propagated by Nazi Germany, viewed Jews as untrustworthy and believed that other nations attempting to control or contain the Jewish population had failed. They concluded that the solution to the Jewish problem lay in either eliminating them or exiling them abroad. Moreover, Japanese aid to Jews would have conflicted with the development of their relationship with Germany and Italy. On the other hand, supporters of the plan believed that welcoming persecuted European Jews and gaining their friendship would lead to the trust and cooperation of American Jews, who, in their view, controlled the American press, media, film industry, and even President Franklin Roosevelt at that time. The Japanese believed that such cooperation could result in significant economic and political gains for Japan without the need for further warfare. Japan's rescue efforts for the Jews aimed also to improve its global image by portraying itself as a protector of human rights and defender of the oppressed. This was particularly crucial as news of Japan's atrocities during its invasion of China had severely damaged its reputation worldwide. A compromise was eventually reached. Japan would support the Jews and facilitate their entry into its colonies in East Asia, albeit in an unofficial and undisclosed manner, so as not to harm its relations with Germany. Conferences between Japanese government representatives and Jewish community representatives in Manchuria continued. During one such conference in 1939, a vision for the flag of a potential Jewish state in East Asia was proposed, a white and green or white and blue background with the Star of David on the top left. One of the notable Jewish officials with whom the Japanese government communicated was Rabbi Stephen Samuel Wise, an influential member of the American Jewish community and a close friend of U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt. In 1940, Mitsuzo Tamura, a Japanese industrialist and strong supporter of the Fugu Plan, met Rabbi Wise in New York. Tamura shared the details of the Fugu Plan and sought his assistance in encouraging Jewish immigration to East Asia. However, Rabbi Wise did not support the idea. He pointed out that the control exerted by expansionist militarists over decision-making bodies in Japan, along with the harsh treatment of the population in Japanese colonies, raised doubts about the treatment and protection the Jews would receive from the Japanese. Meanwhile, Dr. Abraham Kaufman, a prominent Zionist leader who had played a significant role in saving thousands of Jews from Nazism and smuggling them to East Asia, supported the Fugu Plan. Kaufman held numerous secret meetings with Japanese government agencies, expressing his support for the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Manchuria. He called on Jews in East Asia and around the world to emigrate to Manchuria, viewing it as a safe haven where they could flourish, develop, and freely practice their faith under the protection of the Japanese Empire, which did not hold hostility towards Jews or discriminate based on race or color, unlike the Nazi Germans. 
Kaufman promised the Japanese authorities that if the Fugu plan succeeded, Jewish communities in East Asia and worldwide would provide their full support to the Japanese Empire in achieving its goal of creating the greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. This project, claimed Japan, aimed to foster cultural unity and economic alliance among East, Southeast, and South Asian countries, led by Japan, to achieve independence, prosperity, and self-sufficiency while ending the control of Western colonial powers in the region. Colonel Norohiro Yazu, the key figure responsible for implementing the Fugu plan, began selecting suitable locations for Jewish settlements and planning the transportation of Jewish settlers from Europe to East Asia. The plan envisioned transferring approximately 900,000 to 1 million Jews, providing the new Jewish state with necessary facilities and infrastructure, including schools, hospitals, factories, and synagogues. Manchuria and Shanghai in China were considered as potential sites for establishing the Jewish state in East Asia. The process of transporting thousands of European Jews to East Asia from Eastern and Central Europe via the Trans-Siberian Railway Line began. Japan's support for the Jews infuriated Nazi Germany and strained relations between the two allies. Germany repeatedly demanded that Japan cease transferring the Jewish population from Europe to East Asia, but Japan chose not to respond and continued its efforts to implement the Fugu Plan. However, with Nazi Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941 through Operation Barbarossa and the subsequent closure of borders between Eastern Europe and Soviet territory, the transfer of the Jewish population to Japanese colonies came to a halt. Only 24,000 European Jews were transported to Shanghai, where they were settled in a designated neighborhood known as the Ghetto. The Japanese treated them fairly and did not subject them to mistreatment or imprisonment. They were granted freedom of movement, and no discrimination was practiced against them. This humane treatment of the Jews by the Japanese further infuriated Germany. In 1942, Joseph Meisinger, a senior Gestapo officer, was sent to Shanghai to persuade Japan to eliminate or enslave the Jews there, forcing them into labor in mines, quarries, and factories. However, Japan firmly rejected Germany's demands, which undermined Germany's confidence in Japan as a reliable ally. Additionally, Japan refused Germany's request to attack the Soviet Union from the east while the Germans attacked from the west. These refusals strained the already tense relationship between the two nations. As Jewish immigration to Japanese colonies ceased, and Japan became increasingly involved in battles within China, the Western powers, led by the United States, imposed sanctions on Japan. These sanctions included a ban on the export of strategic raw materials, freezing Japanese assets in American banks, and halting material aid from American Jews to Jews in East Asia. Consequently, the Fugu plan ultimately failed. Japan then opted to acquire the necessary natural resources and wealth through military force, leading to clashes with the Western powers, particularly the United States, and the Pacific Ocean. Intense fighting ensued in what became known as the Pacific Front of World War II, culminating in Japan's defeat and surrender to the Allies. However, if we were to assume that things went according to plan and the Fugu plan succeeded, resulting in the declaration of a Jewish homeland in Manchuria, the situation would have been vastly different. For instance, with the Japanese Empire protecting Jews from Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union, Japan would have gained significant support from international Jewish forums, as well as American and European powers. Consequently, it is likely that influential Jewish figures in America and the West would have utilized their political and economic influence to strengthen Japan's relationship with Western powers, support its expansionist policies, and secure its access to raw materials and natural resources. An important point to consider is that Americans and Europeans would have likely supported Japan in its attempt to invade Soviet territory in what was known as the Battle of Namenhin. 
much like their support during the Russo-Japanese War between 1904 and 1905. At that time, the American administration believed Japan was defending a just cause and protecting its own interests, although their underlying motive was to weaken the Russian Empire and prevent its expansion in the Pacific region, which threatened the interests of Western powers. Therefore, it is conceivable that America would have repeated this scenario, supporting Japan's expansionist plans to penetrate Soviet-controlled territories. However, this time, there would have been an additional goal, to divert the empire of Japan's attention away from its southward expansion into the Pacific Ocean, which posed a threat to American and European interests there. With the substantial resources and influence provided by the Jewish community, Japan would have likely reduced its reliance on militaristic expansion and ceased further expansion within China. Consequently, Japan would have avoided developing close relations with Germany and Italy to avoid antagonizing the Jews, which could have severely harmed its interests. As a result, Japan would have moved closer to the Allied camp and distanced itself from the Axis camp. In essence, the situation would have resembled the end of World War I, when Japan joined the Allied countries against Germany and the other Central Powers. In June 1941, when Nazi Germany launched its attack on the Soviet Union and made initial advances into Soviet territory, the Jewish state in Manchuria and East Asia would have exerted its strong influence within Japan, leveraging its control over the economy and decision-making centers. Under pressure from the Jewish community, Japan would have been compelled to officially declare war on Nazi Germany and ally with the Soviet Union. Consequently, Japan would have supported the Soviet Union in its fight against the Nazis, potentially providing military equipment from its navy, air force, and troops from its army. In this scenario, with Japan refraining from attacking the American fleet at Pearl Harbor, the United States would have maintained its semi-neutral stance and not directly entered World War II. However, it would have strongly supported Japan in its war against the Nazis under pressure from the powerful Jewish lobby in the United States. Furthermore, one notable difference in this alternative scenario is that America would not have needed to develop atomic bombs to strike Japan. In most cases, atomic energy might not have been weaponized at all, but it is possible that it would have been utilized for peaceful purposes decades later. All of these events could have led to a rapid end to World War II much earlier than in the real world. With Japan no longer posing a threat in the Pacific theater and instead becoming a major ally and supporter of the Western powers, the Allied forces would have focused all their efforts, resources, and military power to eliminate Nazi Germany. This would have prevented the dispersal of the Allied powers between the European and Pacific theaters as happened in reality. With the collapse and defeat of the German Third Reich, the Soviet Union and the Allies would have advanced into German territory, resulting in the division of Germany among them, similar to what occurred in the real world. Regarding Japan, due to its support for the Allied forces against Nazi Germany and its protection of the Jews, it is highly likely that European colonial powers such as Britain, the Netherlands, and France would have reached an agreement with Japan sponsored by the United States, in which they would hand over some or all of their colonies to the Empire of Japan. Additionally, they would recognize Japan's control over the parts of eastern and northern China it occupied. In summary, Japan would have maintained its borders at maximum expansion in 1942 until the present day. However, its expansion would have occurred through political negotiations and the division of colonies with Western European powers rather than through military expansion and wars as in reality. As a result, Japan would have emerged from the war as a major superpower, possessing one of the strongest armies in Asia and the world. It would enjoy a robust economy due to its control over the Southeast Asian region without resorting to military force. Furthermore, Japan would receive financial support from the Jews and Zionist movements worldwide. The emergence of Japan as a global superpower would have come at the expense of China, which would remain a relatively weak and unstable country under the control of various warlords, as it was before and during World War II. China would primarily rely on the Soviet Union as a strong ally to confront the influence of the Japanese Empire in East Asia. In the Middle East, events would likely remain unchanged, with the establishment of the State of Israel, as occurred in reality. However, a significant difference would arise with the presence of a strong Jewish entity in Manchuria and East Asia, dominated by Russian and Eastern European Jews who would be more influenced by East Asian and Soviet cultures. This entity, enjoying stability, economic prosperity, 
and a vast area approximately 57 times larger than Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip combined, would likely have less need to arm itself and rely on military force compared to Israel in the Middle East. The Jewish state affiliated with Japan and East Asia would become an economic and commercial center similar to Hong Kong today. The stability and economic prosperity of the Jewish state in Manchuria and East Asia, along with its distance from religious and ethnic conflicts, might have made it more attractive to the majority of Jews worldwide instead of Israel in the Middle East. This could have weakened Israel and reduced its Jewish population, potentially leading to its decline, disintegration, and even collapse. Jews might have integrated into the Muslim and Christian population as ordinary residents. A new world order would likely have been established, with Japan and the Soviet Union becoming the major powers instead of the United States and traditional Western European powers like France and Britain. However, tensions might have arisen between the Soviet Union and the Empire of Japan due to the Soviet Union's desire to regain control and influence over Manchuria. The presence of a strong Jewish state affiliated with Japan on the Soviet border, combined with a history of tense relations and mutual animosity between Russians and Jews, could have led to a Cold War of sorts between the Empire of Japan, its Western allies, especially America, and the Soviet Union. Given their close proximity and the potential for a comprehensive Third World War, both parties would likely seek to avoid escalation, favoring negotiations and political solutions to protect their interests. Sino-Japanese relations would have remained tense due to Japan's seizure of lands in eastern and northern China with the support of Western powers. However, the Soviet Union would exploit its influence over China to enforce acceptance of the status quo and exercise restraint. In your opinion, if the Fugu plan had succeeded, would the results have been positive or negative for the world in general and the Middle East in particular? Would Japan's achievement of its expansionist goals in Southeast Asia through peaceful means and its emergence as a victorious great power from World War II have actually halted its aggressive military expansionist policy? Would the rapid defeat of Nazi Germany, with the Soviet Union preserving a large portion of its army and suffering fewer losses than in reality, and its expansion and victory in Europe have made the Soviet Union? With its communism spreading goals, the next greatest threat to Europe, necessitating alliance against it. What other significant changes do you think would have occurred if the Fugu plan had succeeded?